<clears throat> All right, everyone, welcome to this session of uh, from the Department of Sacred Music. Tonight, we will be talking about navigating the liturgical cycle for the Nativity of Christ. Uh, I think this is really one of the most interesting sessions that we've had in a while. I mean, they've all been fantastic. Um, but anytime you get to look at the individual, like why is this happening here and why didn't it happen last year? Because it was Christmas was on a different day. Um, I, I think this is just going to be really phenomenal and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I would like to introduce our two speakers for tonight. We have Peter Seymour, who is from out in Arizona. He, he looks a little bit more rested than maybe some of the rest of us because it's still early out there for him. And Christopher Hallway, who is uh, living here in the Detroit area. Um, before they get started, I would like to recognize Father John El Masi to do the opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. amen. O heavenly King, comfort to the spirit of truth, who art everywhere present and fill us all things, treasure of good things and giver of life. Come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O gracious Lord. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. To our speakers. All right. <coughs> Thank you uh, for inviting me to speak tonight and to co-host this event with my dear friend, Christopher Holway. Uh, as you may or may not know, we basically coordinate the publication of the online liturgical guide. I publish services every Sunday, uh, and I have been doing that for about the last 16 years, and the last, the last six years for the Archdiocese, and then 10 years before that for Metropolitan Joseph when he was Bishop of Los Angeles. Chris, as you know, puts all, the, puts all of the words to music. He gets the settings, and he gets the uh, the text and I puts it all together, publishes the PDF. And then of course, on the online liturgical guide, when you click on the PDF and then the blue links on the inside, you go to the music that matches the text. So that's a little bit about us in a nutshell and what we're able to publish. Again, every Sunday we've published. And of course, all the 12 great feasts, great Lent services, pre-sanctified divine liturgies. We have pretty much everything, uh, almost everything covered. And we're still trying to get everything covered in the church here. So that's, uh, that's the work we do uh, on a regular basis and on an ongoing, never-ending basis. Chris, do you want to add anything to that before we begin? No, it's been a whirlwind for sure. You know, most of the time we've been lately getting music up for all the special melodies, the prosomia that are there um, that I have templates for, and I can just plug in the, the text um, as Peter sends it out. And if there is something that needs to be chanted, a politiki or contacchio or other uh, glories in both nows uh, here and there, Father John El Masia has been doing it. Shadi Karam has been doing a lot of the work, um, even for some of the saints. So as we get some of that done, it goes up online. And I'll show you how to work a little bit of the, of the um, uh, web page in our PDF library, how to navigate it a little bit um, as we go through this talk. So. And it's also great that Peter is here because a lot of times you, you hear about Peter as the one who does a liturgical guide. So it's great to have him here. You can see the face with the name now. So great, excellent. Well, that you're too kind. And I, I just, I thank you all for your support over the years and your patronage. And I hope that all the work that we've been doing is for the glory of God and for your benefit Amen. during the services for sure. Uh, so this is of course, entitled Navigating the Liturgical Cycle for the Nativity. And so we'll talk tonight about, you can see in your outline there that Chris Howard sent out, uh, not just the services for the Nativity itself on December 25th, but the services leading up to December 25th. So I, can, I think we all know that without a doubt, the greatest feast of the church year is Pascha. And of course, we have the greatest time of preparation and purification right before that, Great Lent and Holy Week time of uh, beautiful services, uh, extra preparation with prayer and fasting and so forth. So that means the second greatest time of the church year is Christmas Epiphany, the time we're in right now, and the Advent fast, the Nativity fast leading up to that, and all the preparation and beautiful hymns that we have. And the, as such, the services of Christmas Epiphany and of Advent are modeled after Great Lent slash Holy Week slash Pascha in their celebration and in their execution. So 
I, they, uh, as you know, these periods, again, have 40 days of fasting. Lent literally means 40. So that's where we get that word, as you know. Special Sunday commemorations. Uh, in Great Lent, we have, you know, the Sunday of the Cross. We have St. John Climacus, uh, Mary of Egypt, for example. And then, of course, at Christmas, we have the Sunday of the Forefathers, two Sundays before Christmas. And then the Sunday before Christmas itself, the Sunday of the genealogy. We'll talk about that tonight. And then, of course, the leave takings. But these services also have for Christmas and Epiph Epiphany and Pascha, the great hours and two divine liturgies, two divine liturgies for the feast. It's, it's certainly special in that way. And these are the only three feasts of the year that have two liturgies, Christmas, Epiphany, and of course, Pascha. We'll talk about that as well. But of course, in these festal, these uh, fasting periods, I should say, we have great feasts of the Theotokos leading up to the great feasts of Christmas and Epiphany and Pascha. And they're critical to our preparation and our formation and our understanding of our services to welcome Christ in the flesh. So without further delay, let's get to that. I'm going to share my screen here. And so our pre preparation for Christmas actually begins nine months before at the Annunciation. We'll touch on the Annunciation and the entrance of the Theotokos just a little bit. As we all know, Annunciation is March 25th nine months to the day before Christmas Day. The entrance of the Theotokos, we celebrated it recently. That was on November 21st. So you have the two great feasts of the Theotokos within the two Lenten periods of the year. So let's just touch a little bit about these in our preparation and our journey to the, the cave, to the manger, to Christ himself. In Christmas, at great, uh, excuse me, at the Annunciation and at the entrance, we have one reading in particular, one passage from the Old Testament in Great Vespers that we read, and it's from Ezekiel. And you can see here, the two readings before this one for the entrance talk about the temple, building up the temple and what the requirements were, the sizes, the holy of holies, everything like that. For the third reading for the entrance, and then of course also for the Annunciation, I think it's the second one, it talks about in bold there, then he, Christ, God, brought me back by the way of the outer gate of the sanctuary, which looketh toward the east, and it was shut. The gate was shut. The Lord said unto me, Son of man, meaning Christ, Christ is the Son of man and the Son of God, this gate shall be shut, shall not be opened, no man shall enter by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, only shall enter by it, and he sh it shall be shut. So, in the literal sense, it means the temple. In the spiritual and figurative senses, we're talking about the Theotokos here. She was ever virgin, even after her birth. Her gate was shut. So this is why we have this reading here today. Or rather, I should say on the 21st and, uh, of November and the 25th of March. And this phrase, you'll actually see it interwoven in all the services of Christmas and Epiphany and even for the four feasts of Christmas. We'll get to that in a little while. So the phrase in bold, again, refers to the ancient Jewish temple in Jerusalem. More importantly, it tells of the virgin Theotokos coming to dwell for nine years to become the new temple of God. I'm talking about this paragraph right here at the top of your screen. She fasted, she prayed, she read scripture to prepare for her role in the salvation of mankind. And for our purposes, this reading, among others, sets the example not only for us to welcome Christ, but for our preparation to become temples of God, as St. Paul says in his first epistle to the Corinthians in two different places, but I remembered 3, 16, 17 in particular. We get to Orthros of the entrance of the Theotokos. Again, still talking really quick about November 21st. We would expect to sing the Katavasia from the canon of the entrance of the Theotokos, but we don't. What do we sing instead? Christ is born, glorify him, or give ye glory. Christ is come from heaven, receive ye him. Christ is on earth, be exalted. We're talking about, and then the next uh, hymn there, to the son who was begotten of the father before ages without change, in these last days was made without seed, flesh of the virgin. To Christ our God, let us cry aloud. Thou who hast raised up our horn, holy art thou, O Lord. Again, we would think we're going to be singing something for the entrance of the Theotokos in this one section. 
We're not. We're singing. We're starting to sing on this day for the nativity of Christ. We're already preparing for his coming into the world in the flesh. But then we go a little further, and then, yes, we do sing the canon of the entrance of the Theotokos in tone four. So we, we jump back to that. Since thou art a living temple of God, O Theotokos, no impure hand shall touch thee. Again, back to the reading from Exodus a moment ago. The lips of believers, let them ceaselessly laud, praise thee, crying joyfully with the voices of the angels. Verily, O undefiled virgin, thou art more exalted than all the creatures. If we were to sing the full canons of Orthros on this day, we would have the entrance canons. There are two of them. And then they would end with, still, the Katavasiai of the first nativity canon of Christmas. Or the first nativity, first canon of Christ's nativity. There we go. First canon of Christmas. So this is just the, um, you know, the form that we have now. We, this is our, our order for things in essence, to keep things going in the services. But if you wanted to sing more, talk to your priest, and maybe something can be worked out. And then, of course, the ninth cut of a CI of the first canon of Christ's nativity to finish out this section of Orthros on November 21st, a month and four days before Christmas. That's where our preparation begins during the nativity season, at least liturgically and with uh, hymnography or with its hymnody. Uh, if you have questions along the way, feel free to type them in the chat and uh, Chris Holloway will tell us and we can probably uh, throw them in really quick. More preparation to talk about since we're in the midst of the Advent fast and since December 13th is this coming Sunday, let's talk about the Sunday of the forefathers or the ancestors of Christ. And this year we happen to have Herman of Alaska, Enlightener of the Aleuts. So we have a triple combination for our weekend services this year. Let's go through them really quick. I decided to use the abbreviated rubrics because they're abbreviated and they'll help us get through this faster. We have for the resurrection, of course, in tone two on Saturday night and Sunday morning, we're singing at O Lord, I have cried right there. And so we'll sing four verses for the resurrection from the Oktoikos in tone two. It's tone two this coming Saturday. We're in tone one this week. We have three verses for the forefathers here. And I went a little too far. Let me click back up a little bit. And it talks about their importance in the in the in this Sunday and their their prep and as far as our preparation is concerned, liturgically and of course uh, for our own spiritual purposes for our own preparation. So to talk about this really quick, you know we have the um, the meaning here. Um, this is two Sundays before Christmas. We give special attention to the ancestors in the flesh as well as the prophets of Christ. They include Adam, the first man, Abraham, Isaac, Moses, Aaron, Joshua, Samuel, David, David, the prophet and king. Remember that. And also remember Daniel and the three holy youths. And this is just for starters. In the uh, Orthrosynaxarian, I'll go ahead and get to that, um, which talks about the feast and talks about the Sunday commemoration, we will read that... Uh, bring up my uh, direct quote here. Christ came to fulfill the law and the prophets to redeem humanity, which bemoaned the weight of evil since Adam, to realize the prophet promise made to Abraham to change the law of fear into the law of love and to give resurrection and life to mankind. Uh, of, you know, beautiful meaning there, uh, again, leading up to the coming of Christ in the flesh two weeks, two Sundays before his his birth. And of course, we have the first saint of North America, Herman of Alaska, who reposed in this, on this day in peace in the year 1837. A little bit of his life story there. And of course, we can read so much more about him uh, outside of the services. And then we continue to sing the Katavasiai of Christ's nativity right there, continuing in Orthros now. More hymns interspersed for the resurrection right there. Um, for the Sunday gospel cycle, the, the Othenon cycle, uh, of course, for the forefathers here, and of course, for St. Herman of Alaska here as well. Click the blue links again, and let me see if I can do this really quick. And there's the music to match the text. You can do this on your phone, your smart device in church. Of course, you can print everything else out if you want. It's all up to you, but that's, uh, it's all there matching.
Uh, and again, more for the resurrection, <clears throat> more fathers for St. Herman of Alaska, and so forth. So there's all that laid out for you, a little snippet for you there in a nutshell of what we're commemorating this weekend. Again, resurrection, forefathers, ancestors, prophets of Christ, and of course, Herman of Alaska. Any questions so far? Can I uh, jump right into the next weekend? Uh, we have a question on the verses for St. Herman because of his rank. Yes. So I don't see the question, but we rank it. We include him here because he is uh, a third class or a vigil rank saint, meaning we'll have, if, if, this did, if his feast fell on a, any other day of the week, it would be entirely devoted to him. Nothing from the Octoikos that day. And you would sing uh, Holy Elios for him, Psalms 134, 135. And it's because he is such a great saint in North America. In fact, he's even commemorated heavily, if I could use for lack of better words, on Mount Athos. They remember him there too. Uh, so this is why we are able to include him uh, and maybe not some other saints on a Sunday commemoration like this. The same will happen for St. Spirit on a Trimethos next year, 2021, when December 12th, his feast day, falls on this Sunday of the forefathers. So as it's mentioned here, uh, I can interject. Um, yeah, Father Andrew just mentioned that um, we're blessed this year to have December 6th for St. Nicholas and December 13th for St. Hermit to fall on a Sunday. Every once in a while we get this uh, blessing so we can actually celebrate it on a Sunday and not, you know, if we can make it during the week or not. And like next year for St. Spiridon. Um, if I could just add a couple things, uh, just so you all know too, um, when you chant, when we chant the, the Orthros and you get to the Katavasia, as Peter showed you, Christ is born, glorify him, owed one. And then you'd go to the three and then four, five, six. This is, and like he said, it just reminded me, if we were to do the whole canon, if some of you may know this, some of you may not, the canon itself has multiple, multiple parts. And sometimes there's one canon, there's sometimes two or extra three. You start each ode has what's called an earmost, the first paragraph, the first to cure that you do. Then you have verse traparia, verse traparia, verse traparia. And then maybe you might go to a second canon, verse traparia, verse traparia, verse traparia. And then you would conclude with, the Katavasiya. We skip all of that and we only do the Katavasiya, that very last part of each ode. Uh, obviously, because of time, we're not the monastics here. Uh, some people can do it, some people like to do it. If they have the time and they want to spend three hours for Orthros, that's up to mm -hmm. them. If their priest but, will allow it too. Yep. Yeah, if the priest will allow it, you know. So I just want you to know that that's, if you see only the cut of a sea, that's only a very small, the very last part of each ode. And that's what we do. The right. other thing I wanted to mention, Peter said that, you know, Annunciation is um, March 25th and Christmas is December 25th, uh, perfect nine months. John the Baptist and the Virgin Mary are the other two that we celebrate the conception for. Tomorrow, actually December 9th is the yes. conception of a Virgin Mary. So December 9th, we celebrate her nativity on September 8th. It's one day off. And the same with John the Baptist. Uh, his uh, 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 conception is September 23rd. Yes. And his birthday, we celebrate his nativity on June 24th. So it's just a very interesting theological thing mm -hmm. <laughs> that Jesus Christ is perfect exactly nine months. John the Baptist, as great as he is, greatest of all the prophets, as Jesus said, greatest born of woman, and his mother him, herself, uh, truly the, the temple of the Holy Spirit, the temple of Christ, the temple of God, but their days, their conception and, and nativity is one day off. <laughs> They're one day away from perfection. Yes, yeah, so just, I mean, we're all growing to that glory. Uh, I just thought Christ. it was rounding error. No. <laughs> No, no it's good. one is one day one is one day too long and the other is one day too less. Yes. There, there you go. Yeah. Thank so you. you. I love that. Thank you. That's great. So let's go to the next uh, Sunday. Sunday before the nativity itself. So we had two Sundays before, now we're one Sunday before. And we also have the first day of the four feast of 
Christmas. It starts on December 20th. And so I'll talk about this really quick and then I'm gonna sidetrack just a second. So of course we have three hymns, uh, four hymns for the resurrection in tone three. We have four for the start of the four feast of Christmas, which has its own meaning and preparation and, and, and hymnography and so forth. Then we have again for the forefathers, same as last week. We're celebrating them two weeks in a row. And this is, again, highly important in, the, in their role in the history of salvation. And let me talk about that really quick. So basically, we, and this week, though, also, in, in addition to some of the hymns being same, and some are different, you'll see that in Orthros, we pay more attention to the physical ancestors of Christ as recounted in the genealogies of Matthew, which is the gospel lection we'll use in the divine liturgy. You know, Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob, Jacob begat, 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 begat. And also the genealogy in Luke, there's one in uh, chapter three, I'll talk about that in a second. Both lineages show Christ to come from the Virgin Mary, you know, lineage by blood, and then Joseph bought the betrothed by adoption, same tribe of Judah. So we mentioned the Lucan gospel, which again, chapter three, and the Synaxarian on this Sunday, and I'll, if you scroll all the way down, let me see if I get there fast enough. Uh, but, uh, um, recounted by Luke the Evangelist. It's in the second paragraph here. It doesn't mention Matthew there, although his gospel reading is used. Um, we mentioned the Lucan gospel and the Synaxarian because it goes backwards from Joseph all the way back to Adam, the son of man, and then the son of God. That's where it actually ends. And it also points to the epistle reading in the Festal Divine Liturgy on December 25th. Again, these are all intricately tied together, too. And I'll give you a little snippet of Galatians. God, you've all heard it. God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons or as children of God. That, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. The last section in the Matthean gospel, the Begats gospel in Sunday's divine liturgy is revisited in the first great hour on Christmas Eve. So we use the last section of Matthew one on Christmas Eve. And, we'll, and so that's for chronological purposes. We'll talk about that when we get to the royal hours. Both of these Sundays have repetitive hymns and commemorations and they also have unique hymns as well because of their importance. We commemorate David the prophet and king as a prototype of repentance, not just for his prophetic psalms. We commemorate Daniel the prophet because he foretold of Christ's coming in the flesh from a virgin woman, from his lineage of the royal tribe of Judah, his crucifixion and burial, his resurrection, his ascension, his second coming and his righteous judgment. You see all of that in chapter two of Daniel. I call him the all-inclusive prophet. And then we have the three holy children, Cedrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or Ananias, Misael, and Azarias, depending on which language you want to use. King Nebuchadnezzar, you remember, threw them into the furnace, heated seven times the usual, and they were not burned. And that's in chapter three of the prophecy of Daniel. And so they walked around as if in a cool breeze, especially when the angel Jesus Christ came into their midst. And this also foreshadows Christ entering the virgin's womb as a fetus and not burning her. So there's a double meaning in that one section of chapter three. So that means we commemorate the Daniel and the three holy youths on the Sunday before Christmas. We also commemorate them on what other day? Pascha. Sharing the, again, this reveals the liturgical connection between the two feasts. They borrow heavily from one another. The three holy youths and Daniel, the three holy youths got a uh, lesson is the 15th Old Testament reading in the Vesperal Liturgy for Pascha, and we'll get to that later. So as you can tell, we have the three commemorations on December 20th this year, resurrection, and also forefathers, again, or genealogy, and for feast. Where's St. Ignatius? He's normally celebrated on December 20th. He's not here. Our typicon doesn't suppress him. Our typicon, our rule book, our order book, moves him back one day to December 19th in this situation. Whenever December 20th 
is a, is whenever December 20th is a Sunday. That's right. Whenever I got to get all my calendar dates straight. You move St. Ignatius back to the 19th. Why? So that he is fully and properly commemorated for his role in this time of year. Yes, he was the third to preside over the throne of Antioch. And you've all heard this saying, God became man so that man could become God. St. Athanasius uh, the Great, you know, coined that phrase, along with many other saints too. St. Ignatius taught in his epistle to the Romans, God became man so that man could become human, as in fully human. He went, he knew he was going to Rome in his martyrdom, and he wrote this in his epistle to the Romans. He was going to die so that he could become fully a man in Christ. And it's just marvelous that his feast normally falls on December 20th. But again, our Typicon really allows only for three commemorations on a Sunday. There's only room for three so that they all get their proper due. And so since St. Ignatius, who died for Christ, who would, who would say, yes, I will, first of all, don't give me a feast day. But if you're going to, I'll move for him. That's no problem. Um, <laughs> he moves to the 19th. So we could have, we would have, we have the full order of services published for him on the online liturgical guide. We have, so Great Vespers with Tia on Friday night, the 18th, and Festal Orthros and Liturgy on Saturday morning, the 19th. And this gives churches another uh, day to gather if they can safely in COVID. I mean, if you're wondering about crowd sizes, if you're worried about, you know, temperature checks and everything like that, well, now you can spread out your liturgies, you know, or your commemorations through other liturgies throughout the, the weekend. So St. Ignatius is on the 19th this year, and uh, those other three commemorations are on the 20th. Any questions on this weekend before Christmas? We're almost at Christmas. All right, so if I could interject a little too. Um, you're hearing Peter talk a lot about the Typicon, and yes. this is what gives us so many uh, guidelines as to if it falls on, if this feast or something falls on this day, Monday or a Tuesday, you do this. If it falls on a Sunday, you do this. And it lists everything for Vespers, um, Matins and Orthros and um, uh, liturgy. And it spells everything out. For some of the great feasts, you got a lot of different, if it falls on one day or another, there's a lot of different, a lot of changes. Peter, if I could share my screen, please. Yep, let me um, stop let me, sharing here. I wanna show you all also from our website, this is the Sacred Music Library. Um, so if you scroll down, you could do it a few different ways. You could type something into the box here if you wanted to find it, or you can click on M if you wanna to go to um, what I'm gonna show you here, the Menaean. So we do have all of Kazan's 12 months that he did music for. You click that, and then you get everything. And I try to put the numbers in front so you can get them in order. If you go all the way down to December and you click on that, it brings it up. Okay, so now you have Menaean here. Um, I'm gonna have to move this over. Do you see um, on the right here, there's a bookmark? Yes. Okay. And I just found this. I didn't know this. I was looking before tonight and I was I found this and I had to fix a few things. So I re-uploaded it. Um, you can come in and click on it. It'll bring you to various pages when you click on it. So if you come to um, December and I will, de let me scroll down here to the 40, to page 47. All right, so here. There it is, yes, I see it. December 11th, is, this is the two Sundays before Christmas. Now, Peter does a lot of work for us. He puts all of this, and he already looks everything up, and he puts it in the proper order for every year, how it's supposed to be. But if you ever wanted to look, uh, we've tried to put some of the, the Typicon notes in these Menaean each of the months that Kazan did. I, we added this when we up, updated it. So you can see a few things. If it's, uh, you know, you sing from Vespers, O Lord, I have cried. You sing six for the resurrection, four for the, uh, for the forefathers, as Peter told you. This is part of the Typicon and how we do it. But I also wanted to show you more particularly the uh, page 79. Can you see that now? Yeah. This is for the Sunday before Christmas. Okay, what he just got done telling you. 
Now, this is how complicated some of these things can be. If the Sunday falls on the 18th or the 19th. Or outside of the four feast, keep that in mind. This four feast starts on the 20th. Go ahead. So yeah, outside of the four feast, we're before the four feast. This is what you do. You sing six at, or Lord, I've cried for the resurrection and four for the forefathers. And then it goes through and tells you all the other things you do for that and, or, and Vespers. If this feast, if this Sunday falls on the 20, 20th to the 23rd, then you do, like he said, the three commemorations. You've got the four for the resurrection. You have the three for the preparation of the four feasts. And then the three for the forefathers. <clears throat> so this is how it's all determined. Then it tells you all the rest of what, uh, what you would do um, for that Sunday, if it fell on the 20th or the 21st. Now, if it also falls on the 24th, if it does then fall on the 24th, this is now the day before the feast. So it's not the four feast, it's the paramon, what we call the paramon. Um, and so then you see if this Sunday is the 24th, nothing is done for the resurrection. I know this Lord, is a, I, yeah, keep going. And I'll interject after that, go ahead. Then you, so on a Lord I cried, you sing four for the forefathers, four for the preparation for the four feasts, which you're repeating from the Sunday before. And then from the 20th. So this is what Peter does. He looks all this up and he hopefully gets it done in time and he puts it all together yep. for us. So all we have to do is open up the one document and we already have the music there and you click on this, you click on that and it's all laid out for us. But this is how it's done. And so I wanted you to see that in, in these uh, Menaean, in this Menaean that you can find um, here in the sacred music um, library, you can go to all these things and you can have every month, if you wanted to look up just to see if there were, probably for September, for the 8th, we've got rubrics there and uh, what the Tipicon would say to do if it fell on a Sunday as well. So that's all here too. Um, if Peter doesn't happen to have things up yet and you're looking like two or three months prior and you want to look up something, try the Menean first mm -hmm. and here and see uh, if that might give us uh, give you some information. Thank you. That's, that's great. Thank you, Chris. Definitely. That's wonderful. So and then, so now we can move. Um, okay, let me, okay, hang on. You want to unshare? Yeah, you got to share your screen. Yep, definitely. And now I will share mine really quick. And I wanted to bring up one last thing Wait, about December 20th. Did I get that right? No, I, yes, I did. So now we're looking, when you click on the online liturgical guide on December 20th and you click the divine liturgy variables, you will see this note. Ordinarily, as I explained, we commemorate St. Ignatius of Antioch on <clears throat> December 20th. And of course, the commemoration is transferred to December 19th for the reason that I just explained. So if parishes did not gather for the divine services yesterday, meaning December 19th, they are encouraged to read the Synaxarian and sing the Apolitikian in honor of St. Ignatius, either during Holy Communion or following the dismissal. I talked to Sayyid Joseph about this. I explained to him what was going on this year, reminded him, and he says, okay, that's fine. Let's put something in the variables you know, for St. Ignatius. And I said, how about the Synaxarian and the Apolitikian? He says, yes, go ahead. So that's why we have them here. So St. Ignatius is not totally forgotten on his day of martyrdom, but of course he's fully remembered the day before that. So if your parishes can gather on the 19th for St. Ignatius, by all means, go for it. And then of course we have a special note on the remainder of the nativity fast because the four feast starts on December 20th. The five day four festival period, we observe the traditional fasting discipline, no meat, no poultry, no eggs, no dairy, no fish, no wine, no oil, no fun. I mean, you know, catalysis <laughs> or allowance for oil and wine made only on Saturday and Sunday. So the 20th is a Sunday this year. You can have wine and oil those days, that day, uh, the rest of the week, strict fast. As you may know, if you look at the fasting calendar that we also have on the online liturgical guide, uh, from November 15th to December 19th, the first 35 days of the fast, we can have fish on weekends. And we can have wine and oil on Tuesdays and Thursdays as well. So the 40-day fast at Christmas is a little more relaxed. 
Some places relax it even more. Um, they'll have only strict fast on Wednesday and Friday, and they can have all the way up to fish Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. The reason we have the discrepancies in the fasting here is because it evolved differently in different places over the ages. So I, I believe Antioch adopted what we have for fasting at Christmas, the way we did, the way I explained it, the way you'll see it on the fasting chart. Other places have a little bit less. Some places even have it stricter than that. So we're somewhere in the middle as far as Antioch goes. But the one thing all the churches can agree on worldwide is we have a stricter fast starting on December 20th. So Peter? Yes. With your uh, analogy between Pascha and how uh, the Nativity and Epiphany match Pascha, um, you could say that the December 20th stricter fast almost would be like uh, Holy Week. Yes, and you played very nicely into the next section there, Chris Hallway. <laughs> Alley oop. Okay. Here we go. Let's go to. Uh, I'm going to share this screen now, and I'm going to find out where my uh, tabs are here. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, hold on, just a second. I got to get back over. Oh, wait a minute. That's not what I wanted. Hold on. Shoot. Bear with me, folks. Here we go. Uh, Plenty of yes, time. Yes, I do want this one here. Okay. So, the four feasts of Christmas is a taste of Holy Week in the winter, as Chris alluded to. We have the stricter fasting regimen, for example. We have all hymns coming from the Menaean that week. So, we don't use the Octoikos at all starting December 20th, unless it's a Sunday. So, we'll still sing for the resurrection on Sundays. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, everything is from the Menaean. And as a matter of fact, it's not just for the four feast, it's for the four feast, for Christmas, for the after Christmas, for circumcision, theophany, basically all the way through January 14th, through the end of the celebration of Epiphany. We don't use the Oktoikos at all except for Sundays. We use everything from the Menaean because all the hymns. Uh, for the day are included in that in the Menaean. Nothing has to be borrowed from anywhere else because we are in the second holiest period of the year, the Christmas Epiphany cycle. Peter? Yes. I'm sorry, I forgot one thing. I was speaking of the Menaean. Mm -hmm. um, when Peter was talking about the beginning of getting our celebration coming um, this time for the presentation of the Theotokos, the entrance of the Theotokos on November 21st, that is the first time that we pull in the Katabasia for Christmas. That's the first time at on November 21st that we start to see uh, hymns coming around for the Nativity of Christ. And that particularly is just the Katabasia that are sung, Christ is born, glorify him. Interestingly enough, and one of the things that Peter's going to tell you at the end is this book of uh, Father Tom Hopko, Winter Pascha. Um, in there, he tells us also, if you look in the Menaean, on November 30th, the Feast of St. Andrew, that is also then the first time that you start to see other hymns coming around. Uh, interesting, when you celebrate St. Andrew, it's the both now and ever that you sing at, O Lord, I've cried. It's the both now and ever you sing at the Apostica, and it's the both now and ever you sing at the praises in Orthros that particularly relate to the nativity of Christ. In Bethlehem, make ready and prepare and various things. So we first start to see it on November 21st in the Katavasia, and then we see it uh, more so coming about in some of the hymns, uh, the Stichira, the glory and both now and ever, the both now and ever um, for St. Andrew. We don't hear anything on the nativity other than the canon or the Katavasia until then again, December 6th. When you look in the Menaean for December 6th, then for St. Nicholas, you have uh, the both now at O Lord I have cried and the both now at Apostica, not the praises, but just the first two in Vespers. You have particular hymns relating to the nativity that start to come about. Right. So our preparation comes and it goes. We got the fasting, we've got the canon. A few days later, we get some more hymns. A few days later in, in Nicholas, we have a few more hymns. So we're, the church is getting us prepared uh, little by little and then yes, we get the sunday before and the two sundays before the sunday before and now we get almost like the holy week so we're you can see the progression as to how it goes 
Right, and, and the, the, exactly, and the matching, again, between the second holiest period of the year and the first holiest period of the year, for sure. And then uh, back to the Menaean really quick, all of our hymns come from that, just like in Holy Week, actually starting with Lazarus Saturday, we only use the Triodian. We don't even use the Octoikos at that point. From Lazarus Saturday all the way through Pascha, it's everything from the Triodian, follows the same model. Um, if we did little compline every night, there was a canon for the four feasts of Christmas every night at Compline. During the rest of the year, not so much. You'll have it in the four feasts of Epiphany as well. So extra hymns devoted to Compline, for example, again, for preparation. And then if you were to do daily Orthros on December 23rd, I wanted to point this one out. This is a beautiful section at Orthros uh, from the Apostolica after the praises. I'll read them to you here really quick. The whole earth rejoiceth to behold God's descent upon the earth as now the Magi bring gifts to me. Christ is singing here. Heaven crieth out with the star that it had sent or the star it sendeth. Angels glorify and praise. The shepherds in the field marvel mightily. O oh, my mother, rejoice as thou dost see these things. Next paragraph. While wrapped in the likeness of my form, now it's the virgin Theotokos talking, as the light of revelation for the nations, thou art now come, mine everlasting son. Our, our God took our flesh, his mother's flesh in particular, but then our flesh as well, all of humanity. Thou, the timeless father's child, ineffably brought forth, for thou hast willed to make poor mankind, paupered mankind, rich through this, the poverty wherewith you have wrapped yourself about. You have clothed yourself in our poverty. Hence I hymn thee and thy great compassion, O Lord, beholding me resting in thine arms as an infant, O my mother, be exceedingly glad, for I come to take away the pain of Adam, which he suffered long ago by when the serpent's wicked counsel tasted of the, by the serpent's counsel had tasted of the tree. He's redeeming Adam and Eve. I just thought that was beautiful and Again, if you ever get to do Orthros on December 23rd, which is a Wednesday this year, that, that's there for you. I think, again, just for yes. Yeah. So, Peter, so Peter, thanks for pointing that out because we also see that last hymn that you just mentioned, Beholding Me Resting in Nine Arms, that also occurs, I believe, on December 27th and some of the post festal stuff. Uh -huh. not, you see a similar dialogue, different words on the first two, but this dialogue between uh, Christ and Mary, and it's really beautiful. And I'm going to talk about that at my session in three weeks. I can't wait for that. That's December 29th. Mark your calendar. Sign up for Zoom now. <laughs> and next and next Sunday and next Tuesday as well. Chris Holloway will be back with other seasoned chanters. They'll be talking about festal orthros of the nativity. Sign up for that as well. And that and I think that's all for the commercials. But really important <laughs> sessions. Jump in on them. They 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 show us so much. Now we have talked about the preparation we talked about Lent, you know the winter holy week now we can start talking about christmas and i'm going to again minimize a little bit here for just a quick second make sure i got all my slides in a row here yes here we go there are three times a year when we celebrate the great or the royal hours and they are christmas and epiphany and of course, Pascha. Really, it's uh, at Pascha, it's for Holy Friday. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But here, these are such important feasts. These are the greatest feasts of the church year. And we have 12 great feasts. Well, the two greatest of the 12 are Christmas and Epiphany. Of course, Pascha is above that classification there. So we have the great hours of the royal hours of the imperial hours that take that augment, they don't just take the place, but they augment the regular services of the hours throughout the day. So as you've heard Father John and Greg Abdullah talk about in previous sessions, the cycle of services starts every day with Vespers. It goes to Compline, then Midnight Office. Compline's bedtime, Midnight Office is wake-up prayers. Then you have Orthros, the grand worship of the morning. Then after that, you have the first, third, sixth, and ninth hours, all commemorating particular uh, moments in the day of Christ's uh, Christ uh, leading up to his uh, passion and crucifixion. But they're great at this time of year. Let's talk about why. It's because we add extra readings, we add, we add readings, and we add hymns 
uh, pertinent to the feast through the great hours. But I think at this point, we should start by talking about how to navigate these services. I mean, after all, that is the theme of this session here. So we're gonna talk about how to do them. We start with the top instruction here. If the great hours are done consecutively without interruption, you mean all together in about an hour and a half, you say the opening prayers once at the beginning, which are right down below. And the dismissal given by the priest is only given once at the very end of the great hours and typica service. And so instead of doing the opening prayers at every hour, once we've combined all four hours, we then start a new hour or new great hour with come let us worship. There are some churches that like to break up the hours throughout the day at 6, 9, noon, and 3 p.m. or 7 a.m., 9, noon, and 3 p.m. because they like to have people who are working, you know, stop by church for 15, 20 minutes, come in and worship and pray, and then go back to work or take care of last minute errands and so forth. So, you know, both orders are acceptable. Of course, if you put them all together at once, it's probably easier to do, but the churches, we all have the two options and they both work well. The priest says, blessed is our God, amen, glory to thee, O God, or heavenly king, comfort of the spirit of truth, the Trisagian prayers, the Lord's prayer, for thine is the kingdom by the priest, amen, Lord have mercy 12 times, glory to the Father both now, and we all know this beginning, come let us worship, fall down before God our king, come let us worship, fall down before Christ our king and our God, come let us worship and fall down before Christ himself our king and our God. We're only going to examine the ninth hour right now. So basically what you see here applies to the other great hours. But we're going to focus on the ninth for two reasons. One, for the interest of time. And two, excuse me, also because of the similarities to the royal hours on Holy Friday for Pascha. So that's why I really wanted just to focus on this hour in particular. In the regular ninth hour, any other day of the year, you read Psalm 83. In the great hours of Christmas, we replace that with Psalm 109. Why? Because of the biblical uh, psalms that are used, uh, the biblical verses that are used for the feast, the festal verses. Right off the bat, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies the footstool of thy feet. You hear this throughout Christmas, Christmas day. And I will we'll point that out as we go along. Here's another one. From the womb before the morning star, I'll bring this down a little bit. I have begotten thee. The Lord has sworn and he shall not repent. Morning star, you know, the North star from the, you know, we know what this means. Let's go to Psalm 110, which replaces Psalm 84. Here's a line in the middle. Verse 8. He hath, he hath sent redemption unto his people. He hath enjoined his covenant forever. That's the communion verse at the festal liturgy on Christmas Day. Then we come to Psalm 85. It's the same for both the great hours and the regular hours. So that's the way it works in all three in all of the four hours of services. Two of the regular psalms are replaced with the festal psalms, and then one is kept. In this case, it's Psalm 85. Glory to the Father, both now and ever. Alleluia, three times. Lord, have mercy, three times. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, at this section, we always say the apolitician of the day for, uh, from the orologian. In this case, what's the day? For, the day is apolitician and the orologian. It could be one of two. It could be the apolitician of the four feast, or it could be the apolitician of the paramon or the eve. There are three days in which we could possibly celebrate the great hours of Christmas. December 24th is the most common day, Christmas Eve. But in the case we have to push it back to December 22nd or 23rd, and I'll explain that in a little bit, we sing the apolitician of the four feast. We're still in the middle of the four feasts on the 22nd, 23rd, but by the time we get to the 24th, we are singing for the paramon for the Eve. And again, we'll talk about that in a little bit. I want to just go through the service first before we talk about all the variations in the Tipicon. And then we have the Theotokian for the ninth hour in tone eight. This is the Theotokian used at the ninth hour all year long. So this stays the same. 
Chris, do you want to jump in here and talk about the music to go with these apolitikia? Yes, okay. Thank you. I need to share the screen, please. Yes. Go for it. All right, so we are back to the sake of the PDF library. So if I hit home, it takes me back to the beginning. I need to get rid of this here. Okay, so how do I find this? Well, you could think it might be under N for Nativity of Christ, uh, Nativity here. But if you wanted to do a quicker search, um, you could type in into this box. I already had it done because I already checked it out. Paramon. And click apply. And then you see what comes up is everything that just has something to do with paramount. It doesn't even have to be. It's the, here's the paramount of theophany uh, and other things too of the paramount for Treparium. Now, if you go here for feast and paramount of nativity of Christ and you click on that, now you get everything that's coming up for those, uh, that particular period. The four feast is the 20th to the 23rd and the paramount is the 24th, the eve. So if you scroll down, you'll see right here, you have the four feasts of the Nativity of Christ, the Politikio, hard chromatic. And you also have soft chromatic. And you can see what the hymn is, Be Thou Ready Bethlehem, Eden hath been opened unto all. This is also in some of the hymns, Make Ready, O Bethlehem, Eden hath been opened to all. It's the same thing here. So you can also see what it'll tell you here, what days those are for. This is the four feast, December 20th to the 23rd. Now you might ask, why is there a hard chromatic and a soft chromatic? When I started doing this and through my seminary days and serving in various places, I had always learned from Bishop Basil and it was the hard chromatic that was taught to us uh, because that's what they do at the Patriarch of Antioch. And that's where he learned it. Um, it's called a tone four, but as Father John, could, maybe he could explain it better than I can. It's, it's from an ancient, more uh, earlier form of tone six. This uh, theme of Joseph was amazed. So you'll see this quite often. So our Patriarchate actually sings it in a hard chromatic. <clears throat> so it goes something like this. Mm. Be thou ready, Bethlehem, Eden hath, I got to pull my pictures out of the way. Eden hath opened unto all, Ephrathah, prepare thyself, for now behold the tree of life. And you could hear that kind of a hard chromatic tone six. That's the nature of this hard chromatic uh, form. But if you came back and you click on the soft chromatic, You'll see this is a little different. Mm -hmm. Be thou ready, Bethlehem, Eden hath opened unto all. Ephrathah, prepare thyself, for now behold, the tree of life hath blossomed forth in the key from the Holy Virgin. So it has a different flavor to it. It's Joseph was amazed, but it's a soft chromatic. So which one do you do? You can do whichever one. Uh, you are familiar with. <clears throat> um, it calls for, the reason we put this up, both of them, some people, like I said, follow the Patriarchate of Antioch and they like that uh, hard chromatic. That's how I learned it and I was more familiar with it. But as we were doing this, I came across the Holy Transfiguration Monasteries, Manan, and they said it should be done. The other tradition is to do it as a soft chromatic. So we put them both up there. Uh, you can pick which one you'd like. There's no problem. Sometimes at the bottom, I would put in uh, some places, uh, Antiochian Patriarchate, this hymn is sum as a hard chromatic, just so you know, properly, it should be done soft chromatic or vice versa. You can do either one. The important thing is that you pray it to the glory of God. Yes, we have two different forms of music. That's fine. Um, so the other the other one I wanted to show you was, this is for the four feast. This is December 20th to the 23rd, as Peter said, was on the left side of that screen. So if you scroll down a little bit further, we have the same thing for the paramon. Here's the hard chromatic, and here's the soft chromatic. 
as the fruits of David's seed, Mary was registered of old. Okay, it's, a, it's the HTM, the Holy Transfiguration Monastery translation. And here's the same thing in soft chromatic. So you have the same thing here. As the fruit of David's seed, Mary was registered of old for the hard chromatic. Or you can do as the fruits of David's seed, Mary was registered of old, the soft chromatic. So it's the same idea. And you will see the same thing as Peter's been mentioning, the similarities between uh, Christmas and Epiphany also. You have the same thing, either the hard chromatic or the soft chromatic, same tone of Joseph was amazed, same melodies, either hard chromatic or soft chromatic, same thing for Epiphany. The River Jordan, O Zebulon and Naphtali. You'll have those same things coming up. You can do them either way, either for the four feast or for the paramount. So I just wanted to show you how you can find some of this music, uh, where it's at. You can type, uh, you can click one of the letters to go. If you know the nativity, you can click on N. You can go to M for Menaean, or you can type something in that little box, the search box. Type one word or maybe two words. Let's, let me try that real quick. I didn't do this, so let's see how it comes out. You could type Paramon and then Nativity and see what happens. So see, it narrowed it down even more. You don't get all that other stuff. There's no epiphany here. There's no theophany. It's only Nativity. So that's how you can narrow down your search a little bit too. You type in one word, see what you get. And then if you want to narrow it down further, maybe type another word that relates to what you're looking for. Um, that should help. And if you ever have any trouble, just write to uh, Marina at the Sacred Music uh, email and she can always get us a copy and uh, I can always answer your questions. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Chris. That's excellent. Okay, let's, uh, I'll take the screen back. Thank you. And now let's go back to the great hours. And then here we go to the next note. So we got through the Apolitikian and the Theotokian. So unlike the regular hours, the great hours for Christmas, Epiphany, and Pascha, again, Holy Friday, feature idiomala hymns, you know, not metered hymns, unique hymns, and biblical readings. And let's do a comparison between Christmas and Pascha, or Holy Friday. We have the first one in tone seven for Christmas and Pascha. Same model. And these are kind of uh, sad in nature. Herod was overtaken by astonishment when he saw the Magi. He was overridden with wrath. He became to inquire them of the, about the time when they saw the star and when they were going to find Christ. A wonder to, be, to behold how the maker of heaven and earth was suspended on the cross. The sun was dark and the day changed into night. Tone two for the next one. After it's sticky stikos, it's verse. A little more, um, a little more, uh, I guess you can say a little more, uh, not, not festive, but a little happier, I guess you can say. Joseph was going his way to Bethlehem, and he said, oh, virgin, and vir the virgin said to him, why are you frowning and troubled when you see me great with child? Drive away from the all dismay about this strange matter. God, for his mercy's sake, has descended to earth and has now taken flesh in my womb. Over here, when the lawless ones nailed thee upon the cross, O Lord of glory, thou didst cry unto them, wherein have I caused you sorrow? What, how have I angered you? But nevertheless, I will henceforth call the Gentiles, and they shall glorify me with the Father and the Holy Spirit. We're looking forward from gloom to, from, from doom and gloom to joy and happiness. And, and, and watching Christ fulfill all the prophecies and all the laws to save us. Then we come to the famous Doxasticon. So beautiful. Yes, thank you. Oh. The tone six, compare, same comparison. Sometimes this is done antiphonally between the two chanter stands. Sometimes it's done in front of the icon of Christ, uh, of the nativity in the church, or in front of the cross that's been propped up from the night before with Christ hanging on it. Today is born of the Virgin, him who was who holds all creation in the hollow of his hand. Today, is, he is suspended on a tree who suspended the earth on the waters. We'll come down here. The bridegroom of the church 
calleth the Magi. The bridegroom of the church is fastened with nails. The son of the virgin accepteth gifts from them, the Magi. The son of the virgin was pierced with a spear. Then we sing three times. We worship thy nativity, O Christ. We worship thy passion, O Christ. And then we look forward past the doom and gloom. Show us also thy divine theophany. Show us also thy divine resurrection. We are always looking forward as Orthodox Christians. Peter? Joyful, yes. Yeah, what is the Antiochian uh, custom with respect to how this hymn, both for Christmas and for Pascha, is sung? Uh, sometimes it's sung, in, for lack of a better term, in the epistle form, and sometimes it's sung in the sixth tone. Uh, what is the oh. Antiochian uh, practice for this? I hymn? hear Father John's phone voice coming on. Can you take, can you take that one? Yes, I'm sorry, I lost uh, connection. I, I can actually answer this question and the one before uh, Chris was talking about. Uh, concerning, uh, I, I can't see what you, I, I don't, uh, I'm just uh, connected through the phone only. We're on the doxasticon of the ninth hour. The ninth hour, yes. So it is, um, there is, uh, you know, sometimes we, you know, we assume that what we do, uh, like we have a, spe a special uh, practice uh, for the Antiochian, you know, Archdiocese or the Antiochian Patriarchate. But it's actually, no, it's, there is a universal practice, and somehow in some Archdiocese, they develop their own tradition, if I can say, or made it a tradition, although that's not the general practice. When it comes to the ninth, um, the Doxasticon of the ninth hour, and it's the same thing that applies to the, uh, you know, the, um, to today is hung up uh, on a tree uh, on uh, Holy Thursday. Um, it is actually intoned and chanted. What does that mean? It is uh, called to be intoned by the priest when he's doing the procession. And, uh, and it's repeated. It's called to be basically done three times. The first time is to be intoned by the clergy and then uh, 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 chanted by the choirs. But for, you know, reasons uh, uh, back uh, in the earlier, you know, a couple hundred years ago with the Ottoman Empire and stuff, uh, limiting the number of ch you know, chanters at the chant stand and only uh, limiting to a one chanter, it became this kind of tradition of like, I, you know, intoning and, and taking their uh, freedom to, to sing it the way they, however they want it. Um, but it is intoned and chanted. Uh, but for the Chris Christmas in particular, I don't think there's a procession at that point. Uh, is there, Peter? No, no. Uh, the, the traditions that I know of are two. One, antiphonally, or two at Christmas, there's an icon of the nativity in the center of the church, and the head chanter or the collection of chanters stand there and chant. Sometimes the priest will do it. And I think yeah, that's, so, more of, that's more of a local tradition, though. I don't think it's exactly. more of a, yeah. So the, 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 the general rule, if, if a priest is doing it through a procession, and he wants to do one of, you know, the, either the, the Doxasticon of uh, 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 Holy Thursday uh, or the ninth hour of, uh, you know, uh, Christmas, then it's intoned. But when it's time for the, uh, the chanters to do it, it should be intoned. And we have music for it back to hundreds of years. So we can tell that it's never intoned by, a choir mem by the choir members. Uh, by a choir member or by, you know, just a chanter. Wow, so, that's very, very informative there. I, we appreciate so your we, we did, you know, we, a lot of things we developed because of in the United States and back in the old country, especially, you know, because we, we inherited what we used to do in the old country back at the time when there were no people or choirs to sing because of, you know, of famine or, you know, hardship and uh, economical hardship and stuff. So um, you don't have, you didn't have in churches choirs. You had like this one or maybe to chanters if you're lucky um so that's why and then somehow now you might have a choir of 30 people but they're fighting over who's going to do today's hung on a tree you know on holy you know thursday because well we should intone it no you should not intone it actually if you have a choir no you should sing it as a choir period if the priest is doing it the first time as he's supposed to do then you then he can intone it um, but not, and actually the next day on uh, Holy Friday, uh, when you actually do it in the, 
uh, in the royal hours, it is only chanted. It is not intoned because it's actually chanted once in front of the cross. And like also uh, uh, Peter said, if you have the, uh, the Christmas, uh, during Christmas, you can have the icon of uh, uh, nativity and then you can um, uh, you know, sing it in front of the icon of nativity of Christ. Father John, so, yes. just so people are understanding what you mean, would you explain the difference when you say in tone and chant? Oh, well, when I say chant, chant, it's like uh, specifically there's melody up and down in the scale, the pitches, you know, uh, in tone is more like, and I, I don't know who asked, I don't know if it was Father Andrew, I think I was, if I recognize his voice or whoever asked the question first. Yeah, um, uh, um, intonation is like when we read how how he said it, like when we read the epistle. It's kind of like we're kind of uh, holding the same note. Uh, um, uh, so it's not like there's not a lot of jumps up and down in melodies. Uh, and it's more like a, a freestyle kind of uh, 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 intonation. It's kind of like a freestyle chanting, if I can say. Where with chanting, no, you're you're. Uh, um, you're following specific rules and music, uh, notes up and down. You know, uh, I don't know if that's a good explanation. And like, I think that's good. I appreciate that definitely. Uh, regarding uh, the Apolitikian, really quick, Abona, I, I, I sure. think we, I, I'd like to save that for your talk next week because you're yes, going to you're, think... you're, you're gonna have to talk about that with the Cathismata as well. Absolutely, and there's a difference between that. So I think we can leave this. Till next week, I can, exp you know, we can explain it uh, uh, more. Yeah. So again, another commercial. See, you gotta come back and sign up for next <laughs> next Tuesday. I uh, thank you, Abuna, for that. I really appreciate. You're welcome. That. You're welcome. Um, and it's, yeah, and uh, so now we come to the Old Testament prophecy and the Epistle and the Gospel reading. This is again unique to the royal hours, and of course they pertain to the feast itself. Uh, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, government will be upon his shoulders, his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Yes, it's a Kerygma song too, for those of you who remember. And then, of course, we come to the epistle there. And then we go to the gospel readings. So I want to talk about this in particular. The gospel readings throughout the, the great hours and into the other divine services for Christmas are chronological that would make sense so in the first great hour you would have the gospel of matthew chapter 1 verse 18 through 25 this is joseph's vision from the angel that you know he will be protecting the theotokos and of course this is the end of the genealogy gospel that we read on the sunday prior so we say just this section though at the first great hour and also at festal orthros it'll repeat there keep that in mind Luke 2, 1 through 20, we have the census by uh, Augustus. And of course, Christ born and laid in the manger. This is the actual uh, gospel that actually says Christ is born. And the others talk about it. But this says he was born in the cave and he was laid in the manger and so forth. Third great hour and the Vesperal Liturgy. So that's the first service, the Vesperal Liturgy, after the royal hours. Then... The Gospel of Matthew 2, 1 through 12, the Magi arrive and Herod's plotting. Tell me where I may find this Christ child. He has all of his scientists and his scribes and everybody telling him how to find the Christ child so he can kill him and, provide, and protect his power. And of course, he, that led to the murder of the innocents. Sixth grade hour and the festal liturgy. Remember that. Matthew 2, 13 through 23. This is the actual flight into Egypt. And Herod orders the murders of the innocents. This is at the ninth great hour and the Sunday after Christmas. So in the case of the great hours, you have, you know, Matthew, this first lection, then you have Luke, then you have the second for Matthew and the third for Matthew in that order. And then they repeat. And here's uh, the gospel lesson for those who want to see it really quick. Uh, all these services are already posted online at the online liturgical guide. So Please do study them well in advance of Christmas so that we're all prepared to come and worship. And there's the gospel reading there. I won't go into it. But now, after the gospel reading, we get to the regular form of the hours. So every day of the year, every hour service, we have the, the specific prayer done by the reader. 
deliver us not up utterly in this case in the ninth hour. Other prayers a little different in the previous hours. Trisagian prayers, the Lord's Prayer, priest's exclamation, the Kontakian of the day or of the season, in this case, of course, the Kontakian of the preparation of Christ's nativity on this day the virgin cometh to the cave to give birth to God the word in Ephraim. Makes sense. Lord of mercy, the chanter says it 40 times. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, it goes fast. And then the prayer of the hours. This is an every hour service, first, third, sixth, the ninth, regular and great. O Christ our God, worship and glorify it at all times in every hour, both in heaven and on earth. Lord have mercy, glory to the Father, both now and more honorable to the cherubim. The priest says, may God have compassion on us and bless us. Then he says the prayer of the ninth hour. O Master, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, who art long-suffering toward our sins, and who has led us even to this present hour in which thou didst hang upon the life-giving tree and make a way for paradise for the penitent thief. This is the prayer of the ninth hour. Every ninth hour service has it throughout the year, including the great hours. Then we do the typico. So there's no interruption between the ninth great hour and the typica service. The typica service is said in lieu of a liturgy. We do not have a liturgy on the morning of Christmas Eve. We save it for the night of Christmas Eve, the vesperal liturgy when the feast begins. We're almost at that one. But to go really quickly through navigating the typica, it's very simple. You read Psalm 102. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Glory to the Father. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Psalm 145. Both now and ever. Only begotten Son and Word of God who art immortal. This is the prayer of Justinian. We say this in every liturgy. You know, it's after the second antiphon. So this is a reminder that we are doing this in place or in consolation of no liturgy. The Beatitudes come after that. And if we did, by the way, the liturgy in its more in its older form, you would have Psalm 102, you would have Psalm 145, you'd have the Beatitudes. The Slavic churches keep it to this day. Then with great feast, you have antiphons, verses from the Psalm verses, you know, through the intercessions of the Theotokos Savior save us. That was initially done only for feasts. Now it's common practice. Now it's regular practice. But we follow the older form here, and we read these prayers, these psalms in Tipica, again, in absence of the divine liturgy, the Tipica Stichoi, or Stichi, I should say. Then we say the creed. Again, all of this is read in Tipica, by the way. Nothing is chanted. All of it's read. The priest has this line here. Then we have the Lord's Prayer, for thine is the kingdom. We have the Kontakian of the preparation of Christ's nativity again. We have it in every great hour, and we have it in Tipica as well. You can chant this, or if you need to, you can read it. Lord have mercy 40 times. Another prayer to the Holy Trinity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Psalm one, And then Psalm 33. At the end of the divine liturgy, we can say Psalm 33. We can say Psalm 144. We don't in our current practice. But we certainly say Psalm 33 at the end of the pre-sanctified divine liturgy, honoring the older form. And we have a special verse here that I highlighted, verse 8, O taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the communion verse in Psalm 33. And then the priest gives the dismissal. Depending on the day of the week, the 24th is, or the 22nd or the 23rd. He says, this line with the daily commemoration, by the protection of the honorable one his powers of heaven for Monday. Forerunner and Baptist John for Tuesday. Then Wednesday and Friday for the cross. Thursday for St. Nicholas, all the apostles, and so forth. And then he concludes. And that's the end of the great hours. And if you do all of them together, you're looking at about 90 minutes to execute all of them consecutively together without interruption. Nine, the, the four great hours and the typical. Any questions on this service before we move to the first liturgy of Christmas? Chris, you're muted. Anything? Oh, no? Oh, okay. Good. Let's go. No, I was just going to say I can hardly wait. We finally got here. We finally got here. It took long <laughs> enough, huh? This whole hour seems like 40 days. Anyway, the first liturgy of Christmas is not the festal liturgy on Christmas morning. It's the Vesperal Divine Liturgy of St. Basil the Great on the night of December 24th. 
just like it is for Epiphany, just like it is for Pascha. When we sing the whole the Vesperal liturgy, or more properly termed Vespers with liturgy, we are beginning the celebration of the feast without fail, without exception. Vespers begins the liturgical day every day of the year, no matter what. Just because we might celebrate Vespers uh, earlier in the afternoon, or if we do the liturgy on Holy Saturday at nine in the morning, as opposed to 4 p.m. on Saturday afternoon where it belongs, Vespers still begins the liturgical day. And so the first hymns of the celebration of Christmas start now. The priest begins not with blessed is our God, but blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, now and ever to all ages. Amen. And then we do say, come let us worship three times. But again, blessed is the kingdom because this is a liturgy, not just the Vespers. We have Psalm 103, as usual for Vespers. We have the Great Litany, as usual for Vespers. And then we have, O Lord, I have cried, as usual for Vespers. And so here's the first verse. I cut them all out here just to get to the, the, the festal elements. The Stiki follow and the Troparia follow. We have six hymns for Christmas for the feast from the Menaean. For Pascha, I'm putting them side by side here and we'll scroll down in just a sec. We have four verses from the resurrection from the Octoikos or Pentecostarian. The Pentecostarian borrows from the Octoikos at Pascha. And then four verses for the harrowing of Hades from the Triodian. So we got down here, starting at verse six. Come, let us rejoice in the Lord, proclaiming the present mystery. He hath broken the middle wall of partition. It's Christmas. Free, you know, coming from a mother who hath not known wedlock. Wherefore, let us lift up our voices. O thou who wast born of the virgin, O God, have mercy upon us. And the verses continue for the nativity. When Jesus... The Lord Jesus was born of the Holy Virgin. All of creation was lighted. The Magi came worshiping, angels praising, Herod trembling. For the God and Savior of our souls hath appeared in the flesh. Let's go back to verse 8 of the resurrection. Accept our evening prayers, O Holy Lord. Grant us forgiveness of our sins, for thou alone hast made manifest the resurrection unto the world. For he is our God who hath delivered us from our transgressions. Come, let us praise Christ and bow before him, glorifying his resurrection. We sing these verses in tone one at Great Vespers every eight weeks. The, tone, the cycle of tones is eight weeks. So we inaugurate the celebration, the weekly celebration of the resurrection on Saturday night at Great Vespers with these exact verses. So we're just bar so Pascha borrows from the Octoikos here. Again, and, and one other thing I should point out, the tone cycle, the cycle of the eight tones begins at Pascha. We start over with tone one, no matter where we were a couple weeks before with Mary of Egypt, it was tone six, it was tone two, no matter, it was tone one. We start again with tone one for the resurrection. The harrowing of Hades, the liturgy, the Vesperal liturgy of Pascha, again, not of Holy Saturday, but of Pascha talks about the defeat, the destruction of Hades. And I'll go to the last verse here because I to highlight some comparisons. Today, Hades hath grown, crying, my power hath been swallowed up. Wherefore, glory to thy cross, O Lord, and thy resurrection. At Christmas, a little bit of a similarity, every individual of the creatures thou didst create, shall offer thee thanksgiving. They'll glorify thee. So all of God's creation and even the devil himself, all they can do is glorify God. Amen. Amen. We come to the nativity of Christ and its doxasticon. Augustus became supreme ruler of the earth. We're talking about the census here. That's from Luke. The nations were enrolled by order of Caesar. Caesar was the emperor, the title of the emperor. And of course, Caesar was Augustus's, I think, uncle. Um, Wherefore, our incarnate God, great are thy mercies, glory to thee. We're celebrating Christmas, not Christmas Eve. Let's go back to, and to compare it to Pascha. The great Moses foreshadowed this day that it's the seventh day of the day of rest. 
This was sell we talk about Christ in the tomb at first, but then we finish with returning through resurrection to what he had been alive and well, fully God, fully man. We're celebrating, we're transitioning in this one hymn from the crucifixion and burial to the resurrection. Again, the resurrection starts at the Vesperal Liturgy on for Pascha. The Vesperal Liturgy starts the celebration of the Nativity of Christ. And one other factoid real quick. We have a both now and ever for the resurrection in tone one. Again, for Pascha, this is what we sing every eight weeks when we are in tone one for the resurrection. Again, the cycle for the tones begins at Pascha. Now, moving to the next thing. When the above hymns are chanted, the clergy make the entrance with the gospel book, not the censer. Why? We have an epistle and a gospel reading in this vesperal liturgy. Ordinarily, we don't. We just, you know, the clergy will process with the censer and the priest or the deacon will sense all the icons and sense the people. You've all seen it. It's different. We have a gospel reading. So the gospel book comes out. Deacon says, wisdom, let us attend. We sing, oh, glad some light, like usual. But then, there are, is no daily prokemenon with this Vespers because the epistle reading carries its own prokemenon. So instead of a daily prokemenon from the Orologion or the Book of the Hours, we have a prokemenon, a festal one from the epistle book. The Old Testament readings are immediately begun. So no prokemenon, go straight through the Old Testament readings. Christmas has eight with two antiphonal troparia interspersed in between them. We'll scroll down and see them. Pascha, by the way, has 15 Old Testament readings, if we really wanted to do them all. Also two antiphonal troparia interspersed between them. At Pascha, the worshipers would hear these readings in the nave, while the clergy performed baptisms in the separate baptistry, especially in the cathedral churches like Constantinople and Antioch and Jerusalem. Christmas is modeled after this. Even though there weren't baptisms done in this Vesperal liturgy at Christmas, it still has the same model for the three greatest feasts. And of course, the reading from, our, from the first verses of Genesis start both all the feasts, Christmas, Epiphany, and Pascha, but both because we're talking about Christmas and Pascha here. Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We all know it. It's the first reading at Christmas, Epiphany, and Pascha. Following the third reading at Pascha, at Christmas, and the sixth reading at Pascha, incidentally, we have the antiphonal troparia. So instead of the apolitikia that you'd hear in a regular liturgy, we have special troparia that are sung. And they're sung between right and left choirs. Secretly, O Savior, that was born in a cave, heaven proclaimed thee unto all, taking for its mouth or its voice a star. So the star was the voice pointing to the Christ child, and it offered thee magi worshiping thee in faith. Wherefore, with them have mercy upon us. We insert psalms in between, psalm verses in between, all from Psalm 86. Going over to Pascha, we would have the song of Moses, also sung antiphonally. Let us sing unto the Lord, for he hath been glorified. Horse and rider he hath cast into the sea. This is crossing from death to life. This is Egypt, ancient Israel escaping, fleeing Egypt and Pharaoh. And of course, the Red Sea crushed the Egyptian armies. Same model here. And then following the third and the sixth readings, following the sixth reading at Christmas, 15th reading at Pascha, we talked about the 15th reading a little earlier, we have the second antiphonal troparia. And by the way, the 15th and final reading at Pascha is Daniel, which includes the hymn of Azarias and the three holy youths. So here we go over Christmas. Thou hast shown forth from the Virgin, O Christ, noetic son of justice, a star appointed to thee, thou uncontained, the one who cannot be contained, you who cannot be contained, and you were, but you were contained in a cave, again, by your own will. Then we have verses from Psalm 92. Here we have Daniel. Praise the Lord and exalt him more and more. This is the song of the three holy youths. Well, they were burning in the furnace, and yet were not burned. They were not consumed. Commemorates two things. One, it commemorates the virgin holding Christ in her womb without being burned. And two, it commemorates 
Christ descending into Hades to rescue all the souls who were there, even Moses and Abraham and all the prophets. That's why they're both important. That reading, and Daniel in particular, is important to Christmas and Pascha because of the double meaning there. And I only put in a selection of uh, the Song of the Three Holy Youths, again, uh, for the sake of time and space. But they're there. Peter? Yes. Um, two things. First, a quick question, mm -hmm. and then I want to show them uh, some of that music. New music uh, for this year, yes. Um, all right. The question from Sean is, the verses are taken from the Triodian. He said, I thought the Triodian was for Pascha. He wondered if there were two Triodians. He's getting a little confused. So... Okay, so are we going? Are we talking about um, what you were talking about with Pascha going from the? Um, we're probably talking about "Oh Lord, I have cried." Correct, Sean. And yeah. by the way, well, I'll say it this way. Let me say it this way. Don't you don't have to answer the <laughs> question, Sean? Uh, or oh, there you are. Hi, buddy. Well, uh, yeah. So uh, actually, Charlie caught it. I was I was confused. Uh, because of the comparison, I knew that the Triodian was for Pascha, but because of the similarities, I thought perhaps there was another book like the Triodian just for Christmas, but I guess it, no, it, there isn't. No, no, yeah. good question. So no, there's it, only... gets a, it gets a little confusing because he's showing you on left was Christmas and on the right was uh, Pascha. On the left, various things that take place in the similar way that it takes place on the right for Pascha. So he's going back and forth. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that, Chris. And yeah, and to be sure, um, the Menaean has all of the hymns for Christmas. That's the only book we need. And then the Triodian has all the book, all the hymns for Holy, Great Lent and Holy Week and leading into Pascha, you know, on Holy, you know, leading on Holy Saturday, we transition from the Triodian, as you know, to the Pentecostarian. And the first services of the Pentecostarian are the rush service at Pascha, you know, come receive the light, the resurrection service, then Paschal Orthros and so forth. The last services of the Triodian are the Vesperal Liturgy for Pascha and then the Midnight Office that Saturday night. So good questions there. And Chris, you wanted to bring up another point real quick? Yeah, about the, you were talking about the Old Testament readings with those special uh, uh, Tripari of the prophecies that are coming in between. Right, here we go. I just wanted to show the music, uh, if I could, real quick. All your... All right. Um... All right, so just to let you know, folks, so we left it here at the Paramount and the Nativity. Just one other thing about the website, the PDF library. If you have been looking for things and searching for things, and now you want to go back and look at other things that are different from what you were looking at, there's a thing right here, show all files. So if you click on that, It'll bring you back to everything. You can get out of the search that you were in and you can come back to everything that's here. And then you can go to something else or create another search. So if we were to, you know, these things are called the Trapari of the prophecies. So let's um, prophecy. Vespers, nativity of our Christ, so nativity of the Lord. So that's where... Trapari of the prophecy, first set, Traparia, Traparian of the prophecy, second set. Now, these are both from St. Anthony's Monastery that we put together. We might be offering another one, too, uh, when Charlie uh, hopefully can get me some music for the, from Jessica. We can put both of them up. But if you were to click on here, Traparian of the prophecy, so this is how you would actually, uh, when you get to that point after the um, particular Old Testament reading, the first set, then you would come and you would chant these here. These are soft chromatic and Holy Ch and St. Anthony's doesn't usually put in the A flat, which is why I put, uh, whoops, whoops. Well, we <laughs> can definitely why, see it, yeah. I put this uh, in red up here, soft chromatic sung with A flat. So then you would chant this one all the way through from thou was born secretly in the cave all the way down, have mercy on us. And then you would intersperse it with the verses so you would go the verse, oh, that's not working. You would have the verse, and then it says refrain, okay? So you would chant the verse, and then you would chant up here, and it brought to the Magi who worshiped thee in faith. 
Then you would chant the next verse and go back and sing the refrain. The verse, refrain, reverse, refrain, the verse, refrain. Until you get to the end. Then after you finish the re after you sing the refrain here, then you would go back and you would sing it once again, one final time, but you would use it from here, the coda, and sing the final ending. Okay? Mm. And then you would do the next three uh, uh, or verse a uh, second set of Old Testament readings. And then after that, you would come and sing the second set, and you would do the same thing. You would sing the whole, the whole Treparian, and then I try to put it all on the same page so you wouldn't have to go back and forth with the verses and the, and the music. Same thing. You sing the verse, then the music. The verse, you just chant it straight, and then the, um, the refrain, back and forth. And then you would conclude same way with singing it all through the whole thing again, except you would use the final ending. So that's what uh, we finally have some music. We haven't had that in. I just uploaded these uh, a couple of days ago and hopefully we'll get a second set from Jessica uh, uh, that Charlie's gonna provide us with. And we, I'll upload those too. And depending on, we're, we're trying to stay with the Holy Transfiguration Monastery. So those are probably gonna be the ones that I'll send Peter the links for. Um, but you know, like we have different cherubic hymns, we have different anaphoras, we have different Lord have mercies, Zictinias, litanies, and everything. You know, we put we're only putting basically one up in the liturgical guide for you. But if it's not the kind that you like, or you want to vary it every week or so as you chant, you know, you're free to go and choose different things at different times. Uh, that's why we have different variations there for you. But we can only really provide uh, one set of links. We did, though, however. <laughs> Because we're trying to move into a better translation from Holy Transfiguration Monastery, and we know that people are pretty used to singing Kazan's music for the Katavasiya at Christmas, we didn't want to totally get rid of it. So we, if you notice when you're chanting Orthros, the Matins uh, on Sunday, and you'll go to the Kat, you get to the Katavasiya, and you'll see two links, HTM mm -hmm. and then Kazan. So you can pick either one. Some of the things, rarely, we can't do this for everything, but rarely we'll put both of them up because something is more familiar and we want to give other people a little better option. Some of Kazan's music isn't always, you know, how people like it. So uh, we didn't want to totally get rid of it, um, but we'll give you something else that is maybe a little bit better at the same time. So uh, that's how you can also navigate. So then also one other thing before I leave you here, if you want to know on our sacred music page, you have this uh, is the email from Marina. If you have any questions, write to her and it'll always get to me. Uh, you have other information here too about articles and uh, handouts and things that might be of interest. And then particularly uh, recently updated music is on the right column here. So you'll see it today. I just uploaded the December Menean because I had to fix a few things. And then you will also see here what I'm just talking about, the Traparian of the Prophecy, second set, the Traparian of the Prophecy, first set. So you'll always see at least the, the last eight hymns or so that I've uploaded or changed or, or updated or something. You'll always see them here on the right side. If you want to look for the music of anything that might be coming up, I may have um, fixed something or updated it uh, to help you see it and find it better. So... That's just a little also what we wanted to do tonight is give you a little more information on navigating this website. We are trying to uh, improve it. We are trying to uh, redo it. But because of the virus, um, everything got put on hold and we're sorry. Um, so this is um, hopefully maybe next year, this coming 2021, it will be better for us. Uh, so you can click on show all files and get back to everything and, uh, and go from there. So thank you, Peter. All right. All righty. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. I'll take the screen back. And here we go back to back to the Vesperal Liturgy. So uh, quick recap. Blessed is the kingdom. Come, let us worship. Psalm 103. Great litany. Oh, Lord, I have cried in its tropari and its verses. And then we have the Old Testament readings and the the troparia interspersed in between them. Now we 
transition from the Vespers elements into the liturgy elements. Again, Vespers with liturgy is the more appropriate term. And so the priest, while the readings are finishing up, offers his usual prayer of the Trisagian hymn. Does it quietly. O holy God, who rests in the holy place, for a hymn by the seraphim, thrice holy cry, etc. And then the people here, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, for holy art thou, our God, and unto thee we ascribe glory. And the deacon says, and unto ages of ages, an amen. That's where it really looks like liturgy. And then at Christmas, we sing the Trisagian hymn in this liturgy, not in the next one, but in this one. At Pascha, we would sing, as many as of you have been baptized into Christ. And this tells us that the baptisms were performed at the Vesperal liturgy at Pascha, but at the Festal liturgy at Christmas, and also at the Festal liturgy at Epiphany, real quick. At the end of the Vesperal Liturgy of Epiphany is when the water was blessed. We had the great sanctification of water at the end of the first liturgy. So then the priest would take the blessed water and then fill it in the baptismal font in time for the second liturgy where the baptisms would begin. So that's why Christmas and Epiphany, we don't sing as many of you as have been baptized into Christ until the festal or the second liturgy of the feast. It's different for Pascha. And now you know why. We come to the epistle. And I'm gonna, I want to really stress these because this is where we hear about the feast more so than we do in the festal liturgy. At the, the Brokemenon of the epistle, as I said, we have a special one today. The Lord has said to me, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee, ask of me, and I will give thee the Gentiles for thine inheritance. Psalm 109 from the ninth grade hour. Here's the Brokemenon for Pascha. Then we have the reading from Hebrews. I highlighted some things here. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of uprightness is the scepter of thy kingdom. We actually read from this psalm in the first great hour. Thou, O Lord, in the beginning didst lay the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. It takes us back to Genesis 1. We read that uh, as the first Old Testament reading in this liturgy. Then we start to celebrate the resurrection of christ on pascha we go so fast forward with me a little bit all of you who are baptized into christ jesus were baptized into his death this is for the newly illumined the newly baptized on that day on, on pascha eve and then for christ being raised from the dead will never die again death no longer hath dominion over him these are resurrectional paschal verses remember that when we get to the festal liturgy the second liturgy because we're not going to hear them there. The gospel reading. The nativity of Christ from the gospel of Luke. Remember, we read that in the hours. We're reading it again here. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Because there was no place for him at the end. This is the birth of Christ. The actual birth of Christ. At Pascha from Matthew, he has risen from the dead. And then, of course, the Great Commission. You've all been baptized now, you newly illumined ones. So, yeah, you go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then the liturgy of St. Basil continues like we would see it on any Sunday in Great Lent. And we always have the megalinarian of St. Basil in every St. Basil liturgy. We never do a festal or special megalinarian outside of a St. Basil liturgy. It is always in thee rejoiceth, O full of grace. Never changes. For the 10 times we do the St. Basil liturgy every year. The communion hymn is like a Sunday. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the highest. And then we have the dismissal. May he who was born in a cave and lay in a manger for our salvation, Christ our true God. The dismissal here at the great hours doesn't have the festal verse. It's only here. And then, since we did not hear the Apolitician of the Nativity of Christ during this liturgy, and if people couldn't make the second liturgy, we have an allowance here to sing the Apolitician of the Nativity of Christ as the, as the faithful are departing the church. Any questions on the Vesperal liturgy before we move to Orthros? Seeing none? Nothing popping up, nothing popping up right now. Perfect. Well, there's actually one step in between Orthros and the Vesperal Liturgy that I should share with everybody here. We have an order for services 
for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and they vary based on the day of the week in which they fall. The reason we have a Vesperal liturgy at Christmas, Epiphany, and Pascha is because we are fasting in the morning and fasting up to the feast one last effort to properly prepare ourselves to celebrate the three greatest feasts of the year. That's why we have a Vesperal liturgy to begin with. That's why we have two liturgies to begin with for the three greatest feasts. This has to do with fasting and preparation. Think of a pre-sanctified divine liturgy. That's in the evening. We've been fasting all day, not availing ourselves to communion in the morning when we would normally take communion, because we're preparing and keeping the fast as long as we can before we break it. So this year, December 24th is a, is a Thursday. So when it falls on a Monday through a Friday, and when December 25th falls on a Tuesday through Saturday, this year it's a Friday, we follow the regular order, the, the usual order, great hours in Tipica in the morning or individually. The Apolitician is for the Eve as the fruit of David's seed. Vesperal Divine Liturgy of St. Basil the Great in the early evening, the first liturgy of the feast. Next morning, we come back. Festal Orthros and Festal Divine Liturgy of St. John Chrysostom, which is the second liturgy of the feast. And alternatively, parishes can start at 10 p.m. with these two services on the night of December 24th, ensuring that Holy Communion is served after midnight so that it is not offered twice in one Eucharistic day, which is midnight to midnight. The Orthodox Church measures a day two ways, because we, we have to. One, I roll, if you haven't seen it, you can't see me. One, it's measured from sunset to sunset for liturgical purposes, from the great from Vespers to the ninth hour. And it's celebrated also Eucharistically from midnight to midnight. So when we begin a fast for communion, it starts at midnight. So when we're fasting for Sunday morning liturgy to have communion, we start at midnight. But again, we want to keep the fast as long as we can and not you know, have any conflicts when, when we can receive communion. So we can still receive communion twice in a one liturgical day, but twice over two liturgical days. I hope that makes sense. Let's continue. The great hours are part of the final preparation for the feast. And so a total fast accompanies them, not just a strict fast. If you can do it, you can do a total fast. No food at all. No water at all. And you even do a total fast on Holy Friday. Again, it's modeled Christmas is after Pascha and its preparations. So that means no divine liturgy and no Eucharist for that liturgical day, not in the morning on Christmas Eve, December 24th. So the typica, as we said earlier, is offered in their absence. It's offered in replacement or in lieu of a divine liturgy. However, Saturdays and Sundays are never days of strict or total fast. We are allowed wine and or oil on these days. So if December 24th is a Saturday or a Sunday, we can have wine or oil. Because again, we're celebrating, what are we celebrating on those days? Sunday, obviously the resurrection, Saturday also creation, not just the departed and the martyrs, we're also celebrating creation of humanity in particular. And, this, and we reference this with Apostolic Canon 69. So when the eve of falls on a weekend, we move the great hours in Typica, which are tied to strict or total fast, back to the last day of the strict total fast, which is the prior Friday. So if Christmas Day is a Sunday, we got to go back to December 23rd, Friday, to have the total fast. The rules hold for fasting... Also, for when we would celebrate a Vesperal Divine Liturgy of St. Basil the Great or Great Vespers only without a liturgy. Saturdays and Sundays, never days of strict fast or total fast. So we would have divine liturgies on those mornings for Christmas Eve. Ordinarily, we would break the fast and start the feast partially with the Vesperal Divine Liturgy of St. Basil the Great. But the exception is when the feast falls on a Sunday or a Monday. Christmas, Epiphany, and Pascha, St. Basil's Liturgy always follows Vespers, either when the services are connected or if they're separated. 
So if we do Great Vespers by itself the night before, on the night of Saturday, December 24th, we come back the next morning for the Festal Liturgy of St. Basil the Great. So Chrysostom and Basil liturgies are switched. The, the Chrysostom liturgy is for the eve. The Basil liturgy is the festal or climactic liturgy. So I'm going to run through this really quick. When December 24th is a Saturday, like it was in 2016, you might remember that. 25th was a Sunday. Great hours in Tipica in the morning. The Apolitic on Friday, December 23rd. A politician for the four feast, not the eve. No divine liturgy is celebrated this day, following the pattern of Holy Saturday or calendar day, Holy Friday, in which we would observe again a total fast. And then we'd have daily vespers in the evening for Christmas Eve. Come back the next morning, daily orthros and liturgy of Chrysostom for the for Christmas Eve. Saturday night, great vespers in the evening for the nativity. So you would have the Old Lord, I have cried verses, the readings, the troparia. Then you would have the apostica, which we didn't use. We would have it that night. Next morning, Sunday, December 25th, Festival Orthros, Festival of Divine Liturgy of St. Basil the Great. Again, you can start at 10 p.m. if you have to, like you would on Pascha. And remember, we don't celebrate, uh, we don't celebrate the resurrection on a Sunday when Christmas falls on it. When any great feast falls on a Sunday, it all belongs to the great feast. So that's why the Octoikos is suppressed that day on Sunday, December 25th, specifically, and everything belongs to the feast. Real quick, when December 24th is a Sunday, 25th is a Monday, Royal Hours go back to Friday, Royal Hours in Tipica. Christmas Eve, we celebrate that on the Saturday night, the 23rd, Sunday morning, the 24th. Great Vespers, Festival Orthos, Festival of Divine Liturgy, Sunday night, December 24th through Monday morning, December 25th. Don't worry, I spell this out every year. It'll all be fine. And again, to conclude, the three greatest feasts make for the rare times when Orthodox Christians can take Holy Communion twice in one liturgical day, sunset to sunset, but once each time in separate Eucharistic days, midnight to midnight, fasting each time before receiving Holy Communion. Again, on December 24th this year, you're pushing up your time to receive, you're pushing back your time to receive Holy Communion to the nighttime, and then you come back the next morning for the Festal Liturgy for Communion. Festal Orthodox, I'm only going to do this real quick because this is the subject of next Tuesday's teaching. Festal Orthodox begins as usual, Trisagian prayers for party of the cross, Lit litany, have mercy upon us, six psalms, great litany, God is the Lord, the politician of the nativity, Three times, no, nothing in between, no glory, no both now in between. Little litany, the cathismata of the nativity of Christ. You can chant this. This is the hard chromatic melody traditionally. Again, more on that next week. The polyelios, Psalms 134 and 135. Normally we sing this in an abbreviated form on a Sunday. Again, in the interest of time, Christmas Eve, we have more time. So we do it in its entirety. Little litany, festal and abath me. From my youth up, many passions have warred against me for every great feast, and even for uh, feasts of important saints like George or Nicholas or Andrew or Catherine or anybody else. Prochemen on the Nativity of Christ, let everything that hath breath. The Festal Orthros Gospel, again, um, recounts the last of the Nativity of Christ and Joseph being told, go to Egypt. And not the birth of Christ, not Christ being laid in the manger. That was the last service. That was the Vesperal Liturgy of Christmas. Then Psalm 50 as usual, Tropari after Psalm 50, the intercession as usual, the Kontakian, Ikos, and Synaxarian as usual. And here we not only celebrate the birth of Christ on the 25th, we come in our churches, we commemorate the Magi starting with Festal Orthros and even into the climactic divine liturgy on Christmas morning. The Katamasii of both canons of Christ's nativity in tone one, we got music and text for that. Again, more on that next week. The Ninth Odes, we're going a little fast here. The Exopostolarian of Christmas, we all know and love this one. The, the, uh, the Praises, and then the Doxastica and the Great Doxology 
and the Apolitikian again of Christmas. One more thing, we're going to go into the festival yeah. liturgy variables. Again, this could be of Chrysostom, usually it is. It could be of St. Basil the Great, if it's a Sunday or a Monday. The antiphons, the psalms, you all know them. The entrance hymn, the Isodicon, the Apolitikian and the Kontakian of the feast. We don't sing the Apolitikian of the patron saint of the fe or feast of the temple on a great feast like Christmas. The Kontakian of the Nativity, instead of on this day the Virgin comes to give birth, on this day the Virgin beareth the transcendent in essence. She gave birth, so we switch Kontakia. The anti trisagian hymn, here we sing as many of you have been baptized to honor the baptisms done on this day in this liturgy and also modeling after Pascha, when, which was the baptismal day par excellence in the ancient church and nowadays even in the present church as that practice has been restored across our archdiocese. The epistle, the New Testament readings at the festal climactic liturgy, this one, are actually post-festal. At Christmas, we do not read of Christ's birth. At Pascha, we do not read of Christ's resurrection. What do we have here? Galatians, the meaning of Christ's birth for us and what comes after the nativity. Therefore, we are no longer slaves, but sons, if sons, then heirs of God through Christ. Pascha, we kick off the book of Acts. We read Acts throughout all the bright season. This just starts that cycle. And of course, it talks about what comes after the resurrection. Christ is saying, you heard from me, John baptized you with water, but many days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. We're looking forward to epiphany. And of course, this epistle reading, one through eight, we, we also say it again on the Ascension, Acts 1 through 12, actually, a few more verses. We're already looking forward to the Ascension here. Here we are on Christmas, we're looking forward, which is why it's important that we can do both the Vesperal and the Festal liturgies of Christmas, so we can encompass all the readings. Same with the Gospel. The Magi arrive, Herod plots to kill, and what comes after the Nativity? You know, the Magi are there. You can see that in bold right here. When, the, when they saw the star, the Magi rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and they worshiped God. They worshiped Christ. And then here at Pascha, not the resurrection, the start of the gospel cycle for John. And we read throughout John, we read all of John in all of bright season. And then, of course, how we are to bear witness under Christ, having just been, you know, if we were newly baptized, how we were, you know, because we are newly baptized, we bear witness to him. So we bear witness to his birth and his resurrection. Of course, his, everything in his life. We bear witness to all of it for our salvation. Again, bearing witness. This is John the Baptist bearing witness. We come to the Megalinarian of the Nativity of Christ. If it's a Chrysostom liturgy, we use this. If it's a Basil liturgy, all of creation rejoices in thee. We use the one for Basil. And then we can actually sing this one. We make an allowance for this one in a Basil liturgy during communion. We all love it, so sing it during communion. The communion hymn, the Lord hath sent redemption to his people. Psalm 110, 8, we read that in the ninth hour. Instead of we have seen the true light, which comes from Pentecost, we sing the festal of politic in thy nativity, O Christ. There's the dismissal again. He was born in a cave and lay in a manger. And then real quick, Sunday after Christmas, this year we always, we always celebrate after Christmas. Um, Joseph the betrothed, David the prophet and king, James the brother of God. James accompanied Mary, Joseph, and Jesus into Egypt, and he was Joseph's son from his first marriage. He's called the brother of God because he loved Christ like a brother. And this year we get to include St. Stephen, the proto-martyr, and archdeacon. And further readings are right here. Any questions? Yes. Um, when Christmas falls on a Sunday... Mm -hmm. Um, and you possibly may do the, the midnight, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock liturgy, Orthros and liturgy, right? Yes, you so, could, that's an option. Father Michael was asking, how do the hierarchs feel if, if uh, the churches were closed then on Sunday morning? Well, Father Michael and all the priests, you got to follow the instructions that his eminence metropolitan Joseph puts out. And if there are any questions, you consult your local hierarch. <laughs> Good Hunt. deal. 
But, uh, okay. but yeah, and of course the, the clergy do know, and they get they, they get the instructions from Satan and Joseph every year. Um, if you have questions or concerns or pastoral issues, especially in COVID, um, please talk to your local hierarch before you schedule your services. Peter, that was a beautiful political answer, by the way, I have to tell you. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, political and accurate, Father Michael. It's not just politically correct, it's just correct. <laughs> Uh, and one other thing too, um, I was going to mention. Uh, no, I think I forgot it. Never mind. Any other questions? Nothing else coming up. Thank you. It was great, man. It was a super. Very and and good. I, I, I will say that I appreciate that. Thank you, and I'm glad you were all here. If you have any questions on this presentation or the order of services, um, let me. We, we should give out my email address. I'm going to put it. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to put this into the chat right now. And um, let's see, OLG at antiochian.org. This way you can um, ask me any questions about the services. If I don't get back to you in a few days, remind me, please. Um, we'll do everything we can um, find uh, to find the answers. Um, and of course, I, I'll, I'll also recommend one more link really quick. You probably all know it already because you're here. Um, slash liturgic. On this page, you'll find the daily readings, any daily services we have available on the calendar, and um, and, and uh, any other questions that you can have. You can say, again, you find my email address there as well. But all the services through December 31st are posted. I'll be posting January in the next few days. I know parishes look forward to that, especially trying to. Um, plan their bulletins during the holiday season. I did the, remember the one thing. Um, ordinarily, yeah, I know what we like to do as parishes, some of us do, just one liturgy. But if we can do two, you now know why we should do two. And then especially in times of COVID, when you might have limited capacities in your churches based on the civil authorities, this is the perfect time to do both liturgies. They're both festal. You're both tasting the feast. You're tasting the feast at both of them when we attend both of these liturgies, especially, you know, at Pascha, you know, we, and, and at Christmas and Epiphany. We, so if we have to spread out that way, we can. A, one priest wrote to me and he was trying to schedule multiple services a week, multiple liturgies a week, because he can only allow 25 people in the church at one time. So I reminded him of this and he says, yeah, I'll have both liturgies offered and the royal hours and the orthros offered before each one of them, respectively, again, to accommodate all the people. Peter, uh, where else do you have your um, email? Isn't it on the liturgics page? It is on the liturgics page. So if you click that link, um, antiochian.org slash liturgic day, you'll find it there. And of course, the email address where you can reach me is olg, olg at antiochian.org. Olg starts, stands for online liturgical guide. As opposed to omg. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Just remember O L G, not O. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let me. Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. I put that in the wrong place. I, I sent, I sent. My wife is right here, finding out. We're saying you didn't post that. I, I now realize why I didn't text this to everyone. Now it's to everyone. Thank you. There you go. <clears throat> and uh, there you are. Yes. O L G at antiochian.org. Antiochian.org slash liturgic day. Also, yeah. I'll make this offer too. If you ever need a service that you don't that you don't see. Uh, up, you know, posted, like somebody asked for St. Spirit on all his services. Last year, he gave a father, the father, uh, Peter, you just froze. Okay, well, together, I said, yes. So, I, so Peter, more thing. I know we got, I know we're out of time. Peter, if you've got, we lost, yeah, we lost you. Uh -oh. You froze for a minute. You Am froze. I there now? You are. Okay, real quick, I'll make this, I'll make this fast. Um, for those who can't attend church during COVID, at the bottom of that liturgics page that I gave you, you will see instructions for doing readers, vespers, readers, orthros, and readers typica. And all you have to do is print those instructions and put them side by side with the service of the day, and you will be able to fill in the blanks on your own and offer services in front of your icons at home if you can't go to church still. 
All right, very good. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Chris. Thank very you, Chris. Thank, thank you, everybody, everybody, for being here. We appreciate Thanks it very Amelia. much. Yeah, before we sign off, I'm going to make a couple Chris. quick commercial announcements. Thank um, you. Thank you both. This, I think this is a great example of the Department of Liturgics and the Department of Sacred Music working together, uh, seeing the way that Peter and Chris work together on all this. So uh, thank you both, gentlemen. This was really cool for me. I hope everybody okay. else liked it as much as I did. Um, I'm not going to go through all the commercials because I think Peter mentioned them right in the middle. Uh, next week, or uh, Festo Orthros, uh, a whole session, two hours on that. The week after that, December the 22nd, you will be receiving in your email. You will see it on the Facebook page. You will see it on the Archdiocese webpage. We are going to be broadcasting a Christmas concert. Mm -hmm. um, we have, I think, close to an hour and a half to two hours worth of music from mm -hmm. parishes all over the archdiocese. People have been submitting what their parishes have done in the past. Some people have been putting on their masks, standing six feet away from each other and recording some songs for us. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a lot of great um, you know, music that's going to be there. It's going to give us a, a little bit of sense of normalcy in a very abnormal year. So if you're able to, to attend that, please do. Please share it with your parishes, your friends, your family, everybody. We'll have a flyer out in the email later this week, um, and then you'll see more and more about that. Uh, and then, the, as they said, the, the 29th, which is the following week, uh, Charlie has a session uh, on the, the uh, 12 days of Christmas. Finally, don't think just because we're at the end of the year, the year and our schedule is now over that we're done doing these sessions. We have sessions starting up right after the first of the year as well. Um, we're working on getting that calendar put together for you. Um, and we will be advertising that as soon as we get that information out to you. Plan on Tuesday nights from here until you know, at least the end of the, 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 the school year in June, we might take a little bit of time off during the summer to get ready for the Summer Institute. Uh, but we're planning on bringing you uh, content all spring, all, all winter, all spring. So be on the lookout for that schedule. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Very excited. All right, everybody. Thanks. And we Thank will see you, you guys next Bye, week. Bye-bye. God bless Bye. you all. all Thank right. you for Have coming. Good night. Yeah, be safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.